Good morning all. Um, a couple of light bulbs for my car. LED replacements for the incandescent bulbs um, that my car uses. So on the left I've got an H4 with lots of surface mount LEDs on it. That would replace the uh, dual filament H <laughs> H4 bulb with... Uh, oh, one of the filaments is the dipped beam, isn't it, with the little deflector reflector thing and the other one is the main beam so I'm expecting this one to um, well at the very best probably go bright and dim I mean we all know what's wrong with this one don't we uh, well actually more is wrong with this one than we thought because there's a piece of wire dangling out there which is the connection to the third pin which kind of just falls back in if you tip it up side down Anyway, that's an H4. So now we have, um, this is a brake light or stop light and tail light bulb. Again, dual filament and there are two connection points there and a ground which is on the bayonet cap. Uh, but this one's LED and it looks like it's going to be red LED. Um, but this one doesn't have two filaments because there's only one strip LED, filament LED in here. So it must go uh, dim and bright when you put your foot on the brake. So let's start with this one, the uh, H4 replacement. Now I was going to do the whole thing where I was going to fake being naive and believe that this would make a good replacement for an H4 headlight, but that's a bit stupid because we all know that it won't. The point is the light source needs to be right in the center of this cylindrical column it needs to be in the right position, forward, backward. There's no way this is going to work as a headlight bulb. And it, it will put some light out, but it will just throw it in all directions. It won't have a, a sort of, with the dipped beam, it won't have a, a top above which no light or very little light comes out. So this would just dazzle oncoming uh, traffic, except that it probably wouldn't because it probably isn't bright enough. Um, right, let's try and light it up. And then we'll have a look at, see if we can work out how these LEDs are wired. Uh, so I'll put it on this battery, uh, nothing that way round. And of course, this is just gonna be a very crude resistor LED arrangement inside. Let's try it this way round. And yeah, that lights up, all the LEDs come on, but I mean, they're not particularly bright. Um, is this the one that has three LEDs per LED? Uh, let's have a look. Um, yes, I think we can see there that um, there are three little LED dies, little emitters, and there are six pins. And I think the way this is wired, I don't know this for sure yet, is that um, it's simply three LEDs with a pair of pins each. Let's light this up dim so that we can see those individual points of light. Right, so I'm going to start with a coin cell, uh, CR2032 put up against that connection and put a piece of wire on the negative. And if I dab this onto um, these LEDs, this first row, I can get them to light up individually. So I know that um, the big connector there runs down to the base of all these columns of LEDs, because I can light them up like that. Of course, I can't light up the second LED because I don't have enough voltage to light up two LEDs in series. What's interesting though is if I light up this first LED, it's bright. If I then put it onto the base of the next LED, it's actually much dimmer. Bright, dim, bright, dim. And I think I know why. Can you see through that little gap between the printed circuit boards, there's a resistor there and I can even read the value. It's one, five, one one five one so there's a one five one resistor kind of near the middle led so i think they've placed the resistor between the bottom led and the second led and then they've joined the top two directly together and you might just be able to see some tracking the trouble with these boards is they're not see there you can't shine light through them they're not um translucent and there's a little gap, you can just about make out a little gap in the tracking there. But it's not the same there, it looks like there are three tracks running down to the three terminals there. So let's just do that battery thing again. 
So let's just get this to focus on my lamp. Right, so if I attach this to the bottom LED, it comes on bright. If I move it up to the bottom of the next LED, it comes on dim, almost to the point where we can see the three uh, points of light. I'll try and get in a bit closer. Well, it's difficult, but um, there's it. There's it bright, there's it dim. I mean, as it goes on and off, you can see those three points of light. Okay, so now what I need to do is go to 6 volts and try and get this second LED lit up. So I've stacked two of the CR2032s on top of each other. Now, that's probably a bit too much for the um, one LED, although I might be able to do it in its dim mode, yeah. So I can do it with the resistor in circuit, that 150 ohm resistor. But if I come around to the other side of this, then, uh, yeah, we can see that I can now light up two LEDs, and I can do that in any column. So I can do that with those, I can do it with those. Uh, but it won't light three LEDs because, again, I don't have enough voltage. Let's go to nine volts. So here's the uh, nine volt battery. Now, if I put it onto the end of there, of course, all the LEDs on the whole thing light up because I've now got a whole set of three LEDs in series well, they're in parallel within the individual um, components. There are three LEDs in parallel. These three 50-50 uh, LED modules are all in series, so I require nine volts to light them up. But then the six around the outside, and there are two on the top here, are all again in parallel. Um, so I really need a shorthand for a diode, don't I? Let's just have an arrow. So if I have an arrow, we know that there are three diodes um, in one package. We then know that there are um, three packages in a series chain like this. Um, and then we then know that there are duplicates of that. I'll just do lines now. So this is one surface mount module. This is another one and this is another one. They're wired in series like this. And then the whole um, cluster, I'll go to circles now. Series wired like that. And then they're all wired in parallel like that. That's effectively how it's wired up. Um, there, are, there are eight of these um, chains of three packages. Because as I say, there are six around the outside and there's another pair here. There are six LEDs here. They're in two clusters of three. Mm, has to be really, doesn't it? Now, what about resistors? Is it only that 150 ohm resistor that's on the back of each of these boards? And I think when I was staring at this yesterday, I could see two resistors on the back of this top board. Well, let's find out. Because of this loose wire, this bulb's really not going to be of any use. So I'm going to try and yank out this center section. It's probably going to pull on the wires and destroy it. Yeah, I can see the wires in there. Um, I need to get in there and cut them, really. Right, so here's our little cylinder of uh, LEDs with the 150 ohm resistors. And interestingly, this, this thing that um, falls out is actually a resistor uh, in there. Uh, what's the value of that? Ah, it's uh, 47 ohms, I think. Yellow, purple, black. And that was just connected. I don't know whether we can see this. Let's come in nice and close. It was connected. Um, just in parallel, it was connected to, if I can waggle it over, to there, that sort of, um, yes, you can see the other end of it just dangling off that soldered connection. So all that happens is if you connect via the mm, outside connector, this one, you go direct to the little cylindrical block. If you connect to the middle pin, you go through that 47 ohm resistor. It's a rather small resistor, isn't it? Um, into the block. So you have an additional 47 ohms in addition to the 150 ohms that's uh, in series with, with each of these columns. So actually in my diagram I should have put the resistor in there and there's a resistor in there and there's a resistor in there because these are the 151s, the 150 ohms, 150. And then the two connections coming in, one goes there and one goes through the 47 ohms. And this is the third pin. So that's the circuit diagram of that. I wonder if I can break that apart a bit more. 
Right, so with a bit of brute force I've broken one of these panels out and uh, there's the 150 ohm resistor on the back um, between two of the LEDs, between these two and you can see that there are 150 ohm resistors on the back of those there are two 150 ohm resistors on that top board with the six LEDs and it looks like the bottom board is just distribution there are a couple of wires running from bottom to top so that explains that light bulb actually not quite um i bought a second one of these and this one appears to be intact it's kind of the lean, the leaning tower of pisa but uh never mind that so let's bring in a 12 volt battery pack uh we've got 10 of these uh, nickel metal hydride enna loops 1.2 each times 10 12 volts so let's light it up bright that lights up nice and bright. I'm going to lock the exposure on the camera so that we don't get that uh, readjustment effect. So that's locked the exposure. That's bright. Now, if I use these other two connections, we get a dim light. Um, actually, let me lock the exposure on that dim light. If I can do that, unlock, lock. Right, so now we can see the difference between dim and bright. Uh, there's dim there's bright dim bright so that's with the additional 47 ohm resistor in the circuit and that is supposed to be dipped beam main beam dipped beam main beam yeah that's not gonna work is it right now let's move on to this very interesting um, it's a BAY 15 D uh, BA means it's bayonet Y means that the two pins are offset 15 is the diameter of the cap and D means it's a double uh, connection. You get obviously the ones with the single connection for things like um, indicator light bulbs, that sort of thing. Uh, so let's see if I can light this up on this nine volt battery. Not that way around. Let's try that way around. No, let's try the other filament. No, no. So it won't light on nine volts. This one looks like it does need 12 volts. Let's give it 12 volts. And there it is, and it looks pretty good. Let's turn it around that way. So what we appear to have, uh, exposure still locked, that's good, is dim one way round, so that's tail light. Flip it the other way round, and it's bright. So that's stop light or break light. So it just changes the brightness of these filaments. And it's colored kind of red. Um, Although in my car, I've already got a red plastic uh, filter. So, but there's nothing wrong with having a red bulb inside a red filter. Dim, bright. Yeah, that looks quite good. Let's compare it with a regular um, tail and stop light or rear light and brake light. Uh, that's obviously the bright one. And that's the dim one. So yeah, this is very interesting. Um, inside, let me get in a bit closer, so we can see these two uh, strips of some sort of material. There's a, a red or kind of orangey um, phosphor jelly blob sitting actually on both sides of those strips. They're clearly in series because they're just joined at the top with a bit of solder. Now we can see an inductor in there, can almost see the value of it but not quite. And there are some components down in there. It's a double-sided board by the look of it. It won't run off 9 volts, but it runs off 12. Uh, let's just see the pattern of LEDs if we can. Well, I've locked the exposure quite dark so that we can see the pattern. Now, they're clearly in two clusters. And you can see uh, that the light comes out of the outside of each of these two clusters. They're in two groups because you can see almost like two segments it's almost like a seven segment uh, number one, isn't it? With the gap in between. Now I think I've counted, it might be difficult to show this because of exposure, but I've counted about four or five individual points of light within each of those two segments, if we want to call it that. Strangely enough, there's phosphor as we saw on the back of these strips, but there's no light coming out or very little. Uh, so I don't quite know why they've put phosphor on the inside of those two filaments if we want to call it that um, yeah the light just seems to be coming out of the outside of the filaments let's just go to the bright one at this exposure oh, we can't see much 
uh, on that. Now I've also got two of these because um, you tend to buy them in pairs for obvious reasons. Uh, let's light up this one because this one's really interesting. Uh, let me see if I can set the exposure down uh, on this. So what I'll do is I'll set it bright like so. Uh, hit the exposure lock and then let's take a look at uh, the dim filament and I don't know whether you can see that but near the top it's not so much red it's very much more blue so I think what we've got here is the standard sort of blue or possibly ultraviolet LED having its frequency its wavelength of light shifted by Stokes shift um, through that phosphor it actually changes the the wavelength of the light and I think what's going on with this one let me just unlock the exposure is that the jelly material let's see how close I can get in the sort of phosphor jelly is a bit thin up that end it's quite sort of fat and bulbous down there but it's rather thinly laid down at that end in fact you can almost see yes you can I think see the individual LEDs in there and that means that when I put this on the battery, the blue light or the ultraviolet light is actually coming through on the top there. You can see it there. There's a definite blue glow and it's not on the other one. Where's the other one? Now that's bright. Yeah, it's just not on there because I think the phosphorus has been laid down more evenly. And so that's more of a consistent red color. So I'm really liking these. I think these actually are candidates for putting in my car. This one clearly isn't the H4. That's not going to work. But these I think would. And then of course you get the extra benefit of LEDs over incandescence, which is that they come on much, much quicker. So I don't know, 100 milliseconds um, quicker illumination. That could mean the difference between someone going into the back of you or not. However, there is a bit of a problem. Let's take another look at this one. That's bright. That's dim. Right, take a look at the peg there. Low down, near the pins at the base, dim. High up. Higher up from the pins at the base, bright. So the high one is bright, the low one is dim. But not on these. Look at this. The low one is bright. The high one is dim. So if I put this in my car, what's going to happen? Is it going to, am I going to have really bright tail lights? And then when I hit the brake pedal, the lights go dim. Yeah, I think I am. I got a feeling these are rejects. The, the, whoever was manufacturing them simply put the wires through the wrong holes. And so uh, that's why they were cheap. I can't remember how cheap they were. I think it was about $3 for the pair. So they're very nice and I think they could work. And one of the problems with these uh, LED stop and tail lights is that Often the tail lights are too bright and the stop light is not sufficiently additionally bright. I think these probably look about right. I need to get a lux meter so I can do some measurements. Um, but of course this particular pair have been wired wrong. I'm going to just check them in my car actually, not in this video, but at some point just to see whether that is indeed the case. But they do look like really nice bulbs apart from the problems. And I've kind of become so fascinated with these LED retrofit bulbs and there are hundreds of different types. Um, I've kind of been ordering one a day. Um, I've been on a bit of a, a buying spree and I'm kind of thinking it wouldn't it be fun to do regular reviews of these things. Um, and there are, as I say, hundreds of different types. In fact, I'm almost considering reviving the Julian's Reviews channel and just doing reviews of LED replacement light bulbs. So in those reviews, we'd need to see uh, how bright these things were. So I'll need a lux meter, as I said, um, how bright they are in comparison to um, regular incandescent. So I'll compare the incandescent with the LED uh, retrofit. Now the problem with colored bulbs is that the lux meter is gonna be um, more sensitive in the green yellow and less sensitive in the red and blue end of the spectrum. So probably if I'm going to do a comparison of these two bulbs, for example, I'd have to put them both behind a red lens. Um, I also want to do sort of visual comparisons. So I'm going to make up a trailer board, which is that sort of wooden board that you stick on the back of a trailer 
which has all the lights on it, um, tail lights, stop lights, indicators, fog lights, reversing, all that sort of stuff, so that I can test these and get a visual comparison between them. Um, do they overheat? That's another big problem with LED uh, bulbs. The circuitry, or the, the whole thing tends to get hot. The circuitry then goes into meltdown. Surface mount components simply fall off the uh, printed circuit boards. So thermal imaging, we'll do some thermal imaging. Uh, what else do I need to do? Yes, I need to check um, how they light uh, when you've got 12 volts across them and compare that with how they light when you've got 14 or 14 and a half volts across them. The ones with just resistors, these ones with the um, little buck boost converters in them, they're probably going to be fine. They probably won't change much. But these with the resistors, they're going to get a lot brighter on 14 and a half volts than they're on 12. And that has a lot to do with this uh, configuration. A lot of the voltage is dropped across these uh, resistors. So there's very little voltage across that resistor. And that on the face of it is a good thing. But of course, then when you rate, say there's only one volt across that 47 ohm resistor at 12 and a half volts, say, then when you raise that to uh, 14 and a half volts, you'll have three volts across that resistor. So you'll get a three to one change in current just by raising it from 12 volts to 14 volts. So that'll be interesting. The other thing I want to do is I want to put these inside um, enclosed spaces and run them for two or three days to see whether they overheat when they're in an enclosed space. So I think I might put them in jam jars or something like that. I'll need some jam jars. And uh, then I'll need some enclosures for uh, the front lights, some proper uh, focused beam enclosures so that I can see what sort of mess of light comes out when you put something like this in there and compare this with some of the uh, really quite good LED uh, replacement headlamps, H4s, H7s, H3s, H1s, I think there is. And look at beam patterns, so shine them onto a wall, measure the lux output. Um, so I need to go and buy a couple of headlamp units, but I don't want these horrible curved things. I want something nice and square and old fashioned. So lots to do. And of course, then there's can bus. Oh, can bus. Can of worms bus, more like. So these two uh, lamps, um, this one, hopeless, pathetic, certainly isn't going to be a replacement for my uh, headlamp. This one looks like it's been uh, connected up the wrong way around and therefore won't be a replacement for my uh, tail and stop lights. I am hoping actually that out of the um, dozens and dozens of these things that I buy, that most of them are rubbish because then I can put uh, things in the titles like scam and fraud and all that sort of thing and uh, hopefully attract more views to the videos. Yes, I'm really hoping that these are all bad. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of them will be. So it could be great fun uh, reviewing these uh, LED replacement light bulbs. But uh, for the moment, cheerio.